Today we are going to recreate the coolest thing to ever fly, the space shuttle. And I also filmed a really really cinematic launch sequence, so look out for that launch sequence, it will be amazing. Now there have been a bunch of space shuttles in KSP2 already, but no one has really been accurate enough that I like it, so I set out to build the most accurate space shuttle to this day. And you can judge if I manage to do this. I think it's turned out pretty okay. One thing I forgot though, and if you spot it in this building montage, you know the space shuttle really, really, really well because it's just a really small detail, but something I forgot. So yeah, here you can see I'm building the back of the shuttle with the three vector engines, the RS-25 and the OMS engines on the top. Now those OMS engines have been a challenge since we had to align the center of thrust of them, uh, but now I'm building the wings. Now the wings I have a little bit of a design trick, you can see it here already with the tailplane. I wanted to get it accurate so I also planned in this bump there, you can see in the picture of the real shuttle. And after that it was time to build the main wings and they have a cool feature because I wanted the underside to be black and the top white like the real shuttle was, but first of all I had to get the proportions right, which was tricky. I also thought if my shuttle was too short, but at the end it all worked out pretty well. And um, yeah, after those wings we can duplicate the rear wings and copy them underneath and paint them black. You can see what we are going to do when we have the wings. Now another problem has been the center of lift being in front of the center of mass when you build the space shuttle just how it looks in real life and I couldn't solve this problem differently than just clipping wings into the back until it's okay. It's not really an elegant solution I know but it was the only one I could do but still the landing will turn out a bit horrible I would just foreshadow that the landing will be not as great <laughs> but uh, yeah let's continue with the build here you can see how i did the wings just copy the wings and now i have to yeah clip in different wings into the back but they don't have control surfaces though, so they don't influence the behavior of the shot another problem i encountered was that the whole wing like the control surfaces of the wing they didn't behave the way they should like if you pitch up, if you press S on your keyboard, the wing will just tip down and you can invert it but then the roll controls are inverted and this became a huge problem. Now here you can see how I aligned the center of um, mass and the center of thrust or the center of thrust regarding to the center of mass for the OMS engines. Now I also seen that people build shuttles where it isn't aligned at all and then just use time warp to st stabilize it like the time warp um, exploit but we won't use exploits in this video we will build a real accurate cool shuttle that could actually work yeah because why not yeah then adding the wheels and after that the shuttle is complete and then we can start building the rest with the orange tank now the payload of this mission will be a space station a little mini space station just like in my Buran video if you haven't seen click on the info card I, I rebuilt the Buran. Now originally I wanted to expand the station I built in the Buran video but sadly me deleting a save file on accident and the game not working correctly did its best to completely destroy the space station I built in that video. So we will launch a new space station with the name of Choice. And you might think, Choice is spelled differently, not with an S, but this stands for something. Because Choice means Celestial Habitat of Initial Space Exploration, which is, isn't a thing I just came up in one minute because I misspelled the word Choice. No, I just, I thought about it like, Three weeks in advance, huh? believe me. But anyway, we are working on the external fuel tank, the most iconic fuel tank in spaceflight history and we're just coloring it orange because in white it didn't look cool. I mean there was a space shuttle with the white tank but anyway it was only the first one 
so I chosen the orange tag. Now attaching the SRBs and the separation SRBs and then I chosen to do the top of the SRB with the fairing, it looked more accurate. Then strut it together and with that you're almost done, just angling the engines uh, correctly, which here is only like 5 minutes, uh, but in real life it took like 50 test flights to get it right, I'm not joking. It was really, really complicated. But anyway, the build is almost done, the launch is coming, it will be amazing, the cinematicness of this launch will be unbeatable. So let's get to the launch. And we have liftoff, ladies and gentlemen. We have a very cinematic liftoff, and now we are accelerating towards the sky. And booster separation is incoming. So I steer the space shuttle using the yeah the thrust you can see on the left. I lower down thrust to pitch um, over a bit more, and I increase the thrust to pitch over less. Yeah, that's pretty much how I did it. Now separating the boosters here they go away are they and then we can fly further just with the engines and the tank which was horribly difficult but after the fifth try i kind of got the hang of it and it worked out but it's still wobbling around but anyway it's not really that big of a problem is it but yeah then the tank is slowly but surely depleting we are nearing the tank separation and our apoapsis is rising and rising over 70 kilometers we are almost in space and you can already see the curvature of Kerbin and if you like such videos you can subscribe to the channel just saying but we are nearing tank separation and we roll over and we will separate the big orange tank here it goes it could have gone smoother, but uh, it worked, so eh, why should I bother about it? It worked. Then, revealing the payload, the space station choice, which is misspelled on purpose. But we still have to get into orbit, and for that I switch control to this probe core, which is angled exactly at the same way as the OMS engines are, and the OMS engines run through the center of gravity of this space shuttle so it is all stable yeah i can accurately burn using the space shuttle with offset thrust now have you seen that before probably yes because it's not really that hard to do but anyway here we have a sunset a really really cool sunset i have to say sunsets in ksp2 man they look amazing but after that it was time to decouple the station and it could have gone better <laughs> Yeah, for some reason the mission failed, but I could switch back to the shuttle nonetheless, so the mission didn't fail, and then I just time up to get it out. It, it was horrible, guys. It was horrible. But if you found that horrible, be prepared for the landing, because it's even worse. Now, <laughs> uh, anyway, the space station is here. We can expand, extend the solar panels, and our Kerbal can get back into the space shuttle and head home. After a little orbit around Kerbin, we can do our deceleration burn and slowly get on a crash course, but we have wings, so it's not really a problem. And then switching control back to the cockpit, because we want to fly like an airplane again. And then closing the cargo bay. And here we go, the re-entry. Now it all looked promising at the start, but uh, at the end it will get 
edgy and at the end it will get a bit yeah catastrophical but we could save it nonetheless our corpus are still alive hopefully a, li a little bit but yeah, then pitching up i just wanted to re-enter the same way i did with the buron just pitching up and then down which worked out until now but here it got kind of a problem because it just started rolling but i could save it somehow and i just i just kept flying with this orientation and the, yeah then i activated the control surfaces which were still inverted actually i had different control surfaces but they didn't work and the problem is when the control surfaces for roll are inverted the sas will just make the whole thing unstable as hell because well it wants to pitch right or uh, it, it wants to roll right and the control surface goes left so it controls again like it overcorrects itself really which made the thing a lot harder to land without sas uh, but i managed to do it now this landing in real life in the game was terrible because i had like three frames and when i watched the recording for some reason the frame rate was good like not good but okay like here we have like 20 frames about 20 frames in the gameplay i had three frames i, I don't know why like <laughs> why is the recording better than the gameplay isn't the recording just recording the gameplay i, I have no idea maybe it was a funny bug again but anyway we will make ryanair pilots proud with this landing now first of all a little bump then not really yeah not really getting correctly and then another bump and then i thought like oh shit you forgot something marvin you forgot parachutes no but i could just use the brakes and then we can slow down using the brakes but it was a bit of a pity not using parachutes but then we are done video is done um here is the space station i hope you like it if you like such content subscribe to the channel guys uh, i would appreciate it it means a lot to me goodbye